The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Commodities Hour with your host, Andy Hecht. Now, Andy Hecht. Good afternoon, folks. It's 3.06 on the East Coast and six minutes after noon out west where I am. And it's time for the Commodities Hour, and I'm your host, Andy Hecht. We're all consumers of commodities and raw materials, and those prices affect our daily lives as well as our investment portfolios. Each Tuesday and Thursday at this time, I come your way to share with you my perspective of events taking place in the commodity markets, where prices may be headed and how that's going to affect your nest egg. I'm here to educate and point out price relationships that most investors don't pay attention to. A great way to learn more about the commodities market is to read my book, How to Make Money with Commodities. Just go to my bio at the TFNN.com website and look for the link to the book, which will take you right to the Amazon ordering pages. And I'm here to answer all of your commodity-related questions. So please, Call in at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Remember, this show is for you, the listeners, so feel free to call. The phone lines are open now. There's so much more to the commodity markets than the nominal prices reported each day in the press. This show is meant to educate and sensitize you listeners to the world of commodities. Your questions and comments are always welcome. Let's take a quick look at what's going on in the markets. Well, we have the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 45 points, S&P down around 8, and the NASDAQ down around 14 and a half at the moment. We have gold up 620 today with the dollar index down 488 points, down at that 82, uh, 67 and a half level. We have gold up 620, silver up 7.1 cents at 1991 the ounce. We have the platinum market up 360 at $1,425 an ounce. Palladium up 340 at 735.55 the ounce. We have the platinum gold spread, which we've been um, looking at for the last couple of months. It's uh, at $135 premium platinum to gold, <clears throat> steaming its way to its uh, long-term average of a $200 premium of platinum over gold. And we started looking last week at the uh, silver-gold ratio. Uh, last week that was 65 to 1. Uh, today, 64 and 3 quarters to 1, so coming off just a little bit, but pretty stable. Turning to oil, down 53 cents, correcting a little bit today. Traded as high as one, uh, 107.18 the barrel, now 105.71. We have the products higher though. We have gasoline up 321 points and heating oil up 227 points. And those crack spreads, those refining spreads, folks, you know, since we started, we were looking at them at se the, the um, gasoline crack was about $17.00. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, now we're up at around twenty-six dollars, twenty-five ninety-five to be exact. Up one ninety-five today. Heating oil up one forty-seven at twenty-two twenty-five. We have the Brent uh, crude trading at a premium of about four and a half bucks to uh, WTI, and natural gas up a penny point two at three sixty-eight sixty per million BTUs. Uh, looking at the grains, we had soybeans on November close at 12.86 and a quarter, up 22 and a half cents. That market is uh, kind of flat across the board, so no contango, no backwardation. Prices are pretty flat out through 2014. We have corn closing up seven and a quarter cents at five, ten and three quarters. The bushel that market's in a contango out to 2014, meaning that the future prices are the deferred prices are higher. For example, we have July 2014 trading at 537. The bushel, you know, about 27 cents over the five, ten and three quarter dec price, December price. And we have the wheat market at six eighty two and a half, closing up a quarter of a cent, also in a contango. Uh looking at the meats, cattle, marginally lower after a big day yesterday, one twenty two oh seven and a half the pound. We have the hogs up eighty two pips at ninety six thirty seven a pound. And soft commodities 
Sugar, very quiet, down 16 pips at 16 cents the pound. Coffee, up 270 today, 2.7 cents at 125.95. We have cocoa, up 68 bucks a ton at 22.89 the ton. Cotton, down 73 points, very quiet around the 85 cent level. It closed today at 84.37 cents a pound. And orange juice, moving higher, up 3.15 cents at 142.60. So that's where we are in commodities, folks. Uh, before we go on, I just want to tell you all to please sign up for the free for a free test drive of my Technomental Commodity Newsletter today on the TFNN homepage. The next uh, issue is coming out Thursday morning before the market opens. So last Thursday we examined an intercommodity spread, the gold-silver ratio. And before I go any further, I saw a comment in the den uh, about silver production costs and the fact that uh, the silver price is actually below production cost in some cases now. <clears throat> Folks, I don't uh, pay too much attention to silver production costs because the majority of silver production is not primary production. Yes, uh, the Peruvians produce a lot of silver, the Mexicans produce a lot of silver, but the majority of silver comes as a byproduct, byproduct from copper, which by the way is up 3.05 cents a pound today at 3.17 and a half, uh, nudging up to, uh, to resistance levels, and uh, if we break through I'd say three and a quarter, copper is going to start looking very good, but silver is a byproduct of copper concentrates, of zinc concentrates, and other metals, and as such, the production cost is not as important in silver as it is in other commodities, let's say gold or, you know, uh, other commodities that have primary production. So keep that in mind, that, that silver production costs are not as important. But we looked at the, uh, the, the examination, we, we examined last week the silver-gold ratio, and the silver-gold ratio is simply the number of ounces of value of silver contained in the value of one ounce of gold. And over the past few months, this ratio has moved from 55 to 1, or 55 ounces of value of silver in one ounce value of gold, and that's the 30-year average, to 65 to 1, meaning that gold has outperformed silver over the last few months. And I showed that by understanding this relationship, uh, uh, important clues can be uncovered that might, may in fact tell us where prices may be headed in the future. If you didn't get a chance to catch last Thursday's show, it's available on Channel 13. The gold-silver ratio has moved from last week's level of 65 to 1 to only 64 and 3 quarters to 1, where it's currently trading, so it's consolidating around these levels. All right. So today we're going to look at some of my favorite technical indicators. It, there are five technical indicators that I tend to use in my technomental approach. I mean, I use a lot, but the, the ones I'm going to describe to the, today are the, the ones that I like to use, you know, that I mainly like to use. Uh, and, and I use them to analyze commodity prices. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the RSI, or the Relative Strength Index. The Relative Strength Index compares recent gains to recent losses in markets and indicates whether a market is overbought or oversold. Now this RSI ranges from 0 to 100. And to make things simple, a reading below 30 tells you that, the market is, that a market is oversold. And a reading above 70 tells you that a market is overbought. And if it's oversold or overbought, it could be ready for a correction in the other direction. Uh, no pun intended. The, the RSI is a great measure of whether a market is overbought or oversold. But one must be cautious because markets can remain in an overbought or oversold condition for a long period of time before they're ready to, uh, before they're ready to re reverse. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, I just put up a, a, a weekly chart of copper. Uh, in fact, and it goes back a little bit. You can see the price is higher than where it is today. And you know, uh, what I want you, what I want to show you here is that when when copper reached an RSI of 80 uh, in early 2010, uh, the the uptrend reversed and the price came down, and then it fell to almost 20, the RSI in June 2010 where it reversed, the downward move reversed again, and prices moved higher. 
They uh, they moved way higher. I mean, they went from 280 a pound up to 460 a pound. Uh, I, you know, and and then you know, these these uh, uh, readings above 70 and below 30 cause market reversals in November and December 2010 and 2011, which indicated in 2011 which, which uh, indicated a short-term bottom. And, you know, we saw copper rally when the RSI fell below 20 from, uh, let's say, uh, about 315 a pound all the way up to 390 a pound. Yeah, pretty, on a percentage basis, a pretty big move in copper. So let's put another chart up, and this chart you might remember from last week. Uh, you know the, this. You know if you remember this chart from last week, this is the the monthly gold silver ratio that that I I put together for you guys to show uh, that you know the the the, the gold silver ratio is overbought, and what you know happens when this market gets overbought. So let's again take a look at this because it's it's a current chart. Um, in September 1986, this is a monthly chart of the gold silver ratio. In, 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 in September 1986, the ratio dropped from 75.86 to 57.17 in seven months. And at the same time, the silver market rallied 42%. Big move. The RSI was overbought in February 1991. And the ratio dropped from 98.96 to 89.16 in four months. And what happened to silver? Well, silver rallied 18.5% in that period. The RSI was overbought in May 2003, and the ratio dropped from 80.41 to 53.78 in 10 months. Silver rallied 75%. And the RSI in, in November 2008 uh, dropped from 80.14 to 62.7 in six months, and silver rallied 54%. So, folks, you know, when it's over 70, it's an overbought condition. And, you know, today I'm looking now at a current uh, monthly chart of the gold-silver ratio, and we stand at 70.06. So we're definitely in that overbought territory, not in terms of silver, in terms of the relative strength index on the gold-silver ratio, silver-gold ratio, because it's how many ounces of silver in an ounce of gold. So the bottom line, folks, is that the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, is a great tool that needs to be in your investment toolbox. It's really, you know, it's one of one of the the tools that I love to use, and and in coordination with other tools. And and when we get back from the break, we're going to look at some other tools. We're going to look at, uh, you know, some other indicators that I look at in commodities, which kind of tend to tell me, you know, in coordination where things are going. So stay right there. When we come back after the break, we're going to go look at volume and open interest, two more important technical tools. We'll be right back with you, folks. Stay right there. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pizzamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar, because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Andy, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 46 points, with the S&Ps coming off about 8, NASDAQ down about 15. Uh, the dollar's uh, taking it on the chin today, down 523 points at 82.64, kind of at the lower end of the short-term trading range for the dollar. Um, so we have most commodity prices a touch higher. We have gold up 640 at $1,290 roughly the ounce. Silver up 9.1 cents at 1993 the ounce. We have crude oil down 41 cents uh, at 105.91 the barrel. But interestingly enough, in in the oil sector, in the energy sector today, we have very strong gasoline, very strong heating oil. So the crack spreads are up. Big. The refining spreads are up big. 2602 up 202 on the um, uh, Arbob gasoline crack spread in August. We have the uh, the heating oil August crack spread at 2238 up 160, and we have actually Brent crude up 30 while WTI is down 40. So we have that um, uh, differential trading at around three and a half bucks. Uh, Brent is a premium over the WTI. Today we're discussing some of my favorite technical indicators and in the last segment we looked at the relative strength index or the RSI. RSI measures recent gains and recent lo losses uh, to quantify whether a market is overbought or oversold or neutral to gain clues as to whether prices are due for a correction. In this segment we're going to look at two measures of liquidity.
which will determine how much interest or how many market participants are actively trading or positioning in a market at any point in time. And I like to look at liquidity measures because it's, they simply tell me what other people are doing. So volume is the total number of futures contracts or, or underlying asset traded. The higher the number of contracts traded, the more liquid a market is. When a market moves and volume increases, the increased volume tends to validate the move and indicate a trend. And on the other hand, when a market moves and volume decreases, the decreased volume tends to refute the move or not validate the move. And, and volume is really important measure that serves to validate or refute short-term price movements. Along with volume, and perhaps more important than volume from my perspective, is open interest. And uh, open interest is simply the total number of long and short positions in futures contracts or any assets, stocks, bonds, whatever, that are currently open and have yet to be closed. Open interest is a measure of the active market positions at a point in time. So increasing open interest or increasing long and short positions indicates strength behind a price move and an emerging trend. And decreasing open interest indicates weakness behind a price move or can tell you that a reversal is coming. You know, so in other words, if a market's going up big and open interest is going down, you might think that the market's going to run into some trouble and not be able to continue to move so much. Well, whereas if open interest was expanding and a market was going up big, you might, that might validate it. So I can't overemphasize how important it is to monitor and understand changes in open interest. Because open interest is, is one measure that will tell us what the balance of open risk positions are in a market at a point in time. This is incredibly valuable information when trying to understand if a market is in play. And, and when I say when a market's in play, it, is a trend developing? Is that trend going to continue? You know, one of the things that I have to caution about when I talk about my favorite technical indicators, and we'll get to some, some more in the next uh, segment, and so far we've talked about the relative strength index, we've talked about, which is, which is really kind of a, a, an overbought or oversold, uh, it kind of compares market highs and lows. Then we're looking at liquidity measures, volume we talked about in this segment, we talked about open interest, which kind of is a blueprint of what the positions are out there in the market. Are there a lot of longs? Are there a lot of shorts? Are there a a lot of longs and shorts as they have big volume trading. These things, not independently, but all together, provide amazing clues as to where prices are headed. And I love to use them in commodities because they're terrific. I mean, there's other, other tools such as the commitment of traded data out there. But, you know, in the next segment, we're going to talk about more technical measures I like to use. So stay with us and give me a call at 877-927-6648 if you have any questions on commodities. Stay where you are. We'll be right back with you. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations, including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Well, we're coming up uh, on the last half hour of trading. Well, we're into the last half hour of trading. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average down around 38 with the S&P down 7, NASDAQ down about 10.62. We have the gold market up 660 at 1290.10 the ounce. Silver up 9.6 cents at 1993 and a half. Platinum up 360, $1,425 an ounce. Palladium up 345 at 735.60 the ounce. We have the copper market moving higher today at up 315 at $3.17.6 the pound. And now we're going to keep our eye on copper because if, if, if Dr. Copper can get above 323, 324, it's going to start to look really good. Could, could really uh, take silver with it and some of the other commodities. Uh, could really go along for the ride. Uh, we have that platinum gold spread trading at $135 premium, platinum over gold. We're keeping our eyes on that. That was actually up around 142 yesterday. We're looking for 200, folks. Started talking about that when it was a $170 discount, platinum under gold. Now we're at $140 premium. And that 35-year average is, is pretty stable at 200, and that's our target. Let's not forget that in 2008, platinum trade led over $1,100 premium to gold. And our new trade that we're looking at is the gold, the silver-gold ratio, uh, at around 65 to one. 
keeping our eyes on that because, you know, if these things are going to correct, my, my, my guess, my best guess here, and a lot of things are telling that, a lot of my technical indicators are telling me that silver could be the leader this time. So we're going to keep our eyes peeled for that one. Uh, we have crude oil down 60 cents at 105.72 the barrel, but in the meantime, the Brent crude is up around 30 cents, bringing that spread to about $3.5 Brent premium. As I've mentioned in the other segments, we have uh, very strong oil products today. Gasoline prices up big with oil down. Heating oil prices up big, and the crack spreads are reflecting that. We have natural gas, virtually unchanged, up four tenths of a cent. 367.80. I guess we're waiting for the EIA figures that come out Thursday to see where we are in terms of natural gas inventories. Soybeans in the grains. We had soybeans up 22 and a half cents after the July contracts came off the board. We are under $13 a bushel, uh, 12.86 and a quarter on the November soybeans. December corn, 5.10 and three quarters, up seven and a quarter cents. And we have the wheat, December wheat at 6.82 and a half, up a quarter of a cent. We have the meats cattle down 400 points at 122.05 the pound and we have the lean hogs at 96.32 cents up 77 ticks on the day. Sugar 16 cents a pound virtually nothing today. Pretty good move in coffee up 2.7 cents at 125.95 the pound. We could keep our eye on that one. Coffee prices are pretty cheap. Let's remember that coffee was well over three dollars a pound just two short years ago. We have cocoa up sixty-eight dollars a ton at twenty-two eighty-nine the ton. Cotton down seventy-three ticks, just under eighty-five cents a pound. And orange juice, it's hurricane season. And there's some issues with the crops. You know, we corrected down to the high 120s, but right now we're back to 142.60 the pound on orange juice. We're keeping our eyes on that hurricane season. And uh, some crop problems, some crop diseases in Florida, $9 billion orange juice crop. Going to keep our eyes on that one. So today we're taking a look at some of my favorite technical indicators. And we've looked at RSI, Relative Strength Index, which compares market gains to losses. And we've looked at two measures of liquidity, volume and open interest. Now let's take a look at a momentum indicator that I like to use when doing my technomental techno analysis on any market, and that is the stochastics. There are two types of stochastics, folks, slow and fast. The difference between the two can be summed up in one word, sensitivity. The fast stochastic is more sensitive than the slow stochastic to changes in the price of an underlying asset and will likely result in many transaction signals. Day traders find fast stochastics more helpful, but as a medium to longer term trader and for investors, I like to use slow stochastics because it's less sensitive and it yields fewer, but in my mind, for, for my time horizon a more robust set of signals. So what are stochastics? Stochastics quantify the momentum of a price rise or decline. Stochastics are a momentum indicator. They tell us whether a price trend is gaining momentum or losing momentum and if it's in danger of reversing. Stochastics quantify the momentum of a price rise or decline. Stochastics measure where an asset's price closes relative to its price range. The theory behind stochastics is that prices tend to close near the highs in rising markets and near the lows in falling markets. And let's test that out. You know, gold, let's look at gold. Gold's been correcting lately. And, you know, today we had a range of 1275.60 the ounce on the downside, and we had a high of 1294.70. Right now, right, you know, a little after the close, we're trading at 1290.70. So the stochastics are positive for gold because it's closing closer to the highs than the lows. And that's, you know, that's an important, same thing for silver. High in silver today, $20.04, low, 1966. We're, right now we're up 13.6 cents. It's 1997 and a half, only about seven cents off the highs, and 30 some odd cents off the lows. Again, the stochastics would tell us in this case that the market trend seems to be positive because the markets are closing closer to their highs, and the trend has been up. So the range in stochastics is zero to 100. A reading below 20 
is a uh, is an uh, indicates an oversold condition, and a reading above 80 indicates an overbought position. All right. So now let's look at a chart, and I have to warn you, this chart looks like a mess, but bear with me. There's great order in this particular mess. All right. So let's take a look at a slide on how stochastic works practically on this daily corn chart that I put up on Tiger TV and in the den. The charts from my book, How to Make Money with Commodities, which you can pick up on, uh, you know, on the Amazon ordering page through the, uh, the home page on, uh, on uh, TFNN.com. So what is, this short, short, what is this chart telling us? The chart's telling us the circles indicate overbought conditions and the rectangles indicate oversold conditions okay so notice how the slow stochastic can clue us in to some really dramatic price moves in the corn market let's take a look right here we have uh, late 2011 we have a very overbought condition uh, on the stochastics up here and look at what happened to corn it dropped like a stone it dropped from above 670 to 6 huge move then the stochastics, the slow stochastics, showed us uh, back in, I guess, in about June, sometime in January 2012, <coughs> an oversold condition where the box is. We saw a tremendous rally, then overbought again, and we had a dip. Oversold, we had a rally. So overbought, a dip, oversold, a rally just over and over. So the stochastics are a great, you know, they're, they're a great uh, uh, technical indicator to be used, but not alone in conjunction with RSI, volume, open interest, and you know, that's, what's, that, that's, what, that's what I like to do. I like to use all of these things together, and I'd like to bring this all together for you. And the next chart, which is the weekly silver chart from last week. Uh, Wednesday's closed before the almost dollar rally uh, last Thursday. A and it'll really bring it all, all together for us. Uh, this, this, this chart is a great representation of how the technical measures we've already looked at, relative strength index, volume, open interest, stochastics, all used together in unison can paint a great picture of where a market has been and where the price may very well be heading. So last week on Wednesday, the weekly silver chart told us the following. The RSI was brutally oversold, below 20 at 19.4. The stochastics were brutally oversold at 9.2, and they were crossing. And the open interest reflected, it, it dropped. It dropped in a down market, which signals that the down move was running out of steam. So, you know, those three things. And finally, volume, if you notice down here, was lower. And, and that, that, as the market moved lower. So the stars really lined up last week in silver. And the technical tools, you know, looked at on Wednesday, predicted a turn around. And on Thursday, silver moved, I think it moved up 94 cents or, or almost a buck, over 5% higher in one day trading session. And, you know, it, it, looking at RSI, stochastics, volume, and open interest in the futures contracts all together, you know, could lead someone to say, ooh, this thing is oversold. Now, it doesn't happen every time, but it happened to ha happen uh, uh, very well and work very well last Wednesday. If you bought on Wednesday, Thursday, you did really well. So, one more slide here. We're going to look at uh, historical volatility. We talked on about options a couple of weeks ago, and if you missed that show, it's in the archives on Channel 13. And we talked about implied volatility and historical volatility, and we'll go back, because I like to look at historical volatility and it is one of my favorite statistical measures. It's a statistic that measures historical price fluctuation. For mathematicians out there, it's the standard deviation of price differences over time. Historical volatility measures a historical price range, and I believe that history tends to repeat itself. Not always the same, but very similarly. 
So monitoring today's historical volatility against historical volatility of the past can uncover some great clues as to where the future price range of a market may be. Now historical volatility can be a, a daily measure, a weekly measure, a monthly, a quarterly, and annually, or for very short term, uh, term traders, you can look at historical volatility at a five minute, one minute, hourly chart, and so on. This is, a ve this is very useful information for day traders, as well as investors and longer term traders. And the bottom line here, folks, is to compare historical volatility where it is at present to where it's been in the past and to determine is it too high or too low compared to where it's been in the past and this is going to help you make good assumptions as to whether the price range in the future will be narrower or will be wider than it currently is today and if you trade options I mean, you know, if you trade options, historical volatility is an imperative. It's an important measure <clears throat> when analyzing whether at-the-money options are cheap or expensive. The chief determinant of option prices or premiums is implied volatility, or what option traders think the market's future price range may be. So as a general rule, if implied volatility is lower than historical volatility on at-the-money options, then those options are cheap. I consider them cheap. Again, if implied volatility is lower than historical volatility, and this goes for at-the-money options, then they're cheap. Now, if implied volatility is much higher than historical volatility on at-the-money options, then those options are expensive because they're, they're reflecting that the, 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 the consensus is that there's going to be a, a wider range in the future, that's what the market is implying through the option premiums, than there has been historically for the same period. And as traders and investors, we always want to buy cheap and sell expensive. So, you know, long term it's a winning formula and it's a winning strategy. So what I recommend is that if you do trade options, or you do look at option prices, I think that whether you trade them or not, Everyone needs to look at option prices. You need to look at the implied volatility of the option versus the historical volatility of the market for the same period in history to decide whether the options are telling us the range in the future will be wider or narrower. And that will tell you whether the options, based on your view, are cheap or expensive. And if they're cheap, then it makes sense to buy calls if you're bullish and puts if you're or puts if you're bearish, or both if you think there's going to be an explosion one way or the other. And if they're very expensive, perhaps it makes sense to sell them, to sell puts on a stock you want to buy on a dip, or to sell calls against the stock that might already be in your portfolio. So. Historical volatility is important, and historical volatility used in unison with these other technical indicators can just round out the way that you look at markets and the way that you make assumptions for the future. And remember, the more of these tools that are in your toolbox, the better off you, better investor you're going to become, or a better trader, certainly. So, stay tuned. We'll be back after this short break, and we're going to bring all this stuff together. And we'll look at the markets again. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back with you. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news, I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return in that same period of time, and it's now here for you. Subscribers to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, have free access to this exciting live workshop. The trend is your friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Decisions shape your destiny, and your trading destiny is now here for you. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We're coming up to the close in the equity markets. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average off 33. It's coming back at the moment. Uh, we have the S&P down 6 and the NASDAQ down 9. Uh, dollar index closed down 559 points. Big move. Well, let's see what commodities do overnight. We have uh, gold up eight bucks at twelve ninety one fifty the ounce. Silver steaming back up fifteen point one cents at nineteen ninety nine, just under that twenty dollar level. And we have the crude oil down fifty six cents. Kind of a quiet day today, uh, correcting a little bit. But we have the oil products very strong. So that that sector continues to look strong to me. Uh, we have, let's just take a look. We had the bonds up, so interest rates are a little bit lower today. Grains up for the most part, uh, soft commodities mixed, and uh, the meats mixed as well. So today, we took a close look at some of my favorite technical indicators. We looked at relative strength indexes, we looked at volume, open interest, the liquidity indicators, we looked at momentum indicators like stochastics, and we looked at historical volatility. And there are so many more indicators that are useful and that I use and are, are great, such as moving averages, channels, Bollinger Bands, MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence um, uh, Tools, Parabolics, Elliott Wave Theory, 
which is based on Fibonacci numbers and many, many others that come out all the time and that are available on, on many different analytical packages. And these are all great tools. But I have to warn you, never use just one to make a trading decision. Use them together. And the more the merrier, the more validation from a group of these technical indicators, the greater the chance that you'll get the market right. You just have to do your homework. And sometimes these tools can yield overbought or oversold conditions that can remain in place for long periods of time. Now having said that, when the stars line up and all of these tools are pointing in the same direction, many profitable opportunities can, prevent themse uh, can present themselves. Remember, there are a lot of sophisticated traders out there watching markets, and a lot of them use these tools. And, and sometimes the herd of buying or selling will come from the signals that these tools provide. You know, we talked, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago about high-frequency trading. And, and I have to tell you, a lot of these tools are in that high-frequency soup so you gotta take you know note and look at these technical things do your homework so I'd like you all to sign up today for my technomental commodities report on the TFNN homepage there's a free trial offered so please test drive it today you know uh, the, the next report comes out Thursday morning and I'll probably have another um, trade recommendation in there uh, we had two last week and you know it, I, I think it'll be worth your while to check it out and tune in this Thursday we're gonna take a close look at the technical side of energy markets with a very special guest Cynthia Case and uh, I think that'll be a really interesting she has a very interesting way of looking at the technicals in crude oil and natural gas and, and the energy sector so tune in Tune in and, and, and let's, we'll, we'll take a really close look at, at energy. And, and before we leave today, I want to talk a little bit about copper. Because to me, looking at the whole range of commodities that are, are going on out there and what's you know, the action, we've already seen the action in gold and silver last week. And you know, they're looking pretty good. Oil's been rallying for weeks and weeks now. Copper's looking great, and we're going to keep our, our eye on that. And if it breaks up, maybe I'll talk a little bit about copper on Tom's show later. That's it for today, folks. I hope you'll tune in next time. Remember, the Commodities Hour with me, Andy Heck, airs each Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 4 Eastern Time. And check out my book, How to Make Money with Commodities. Remember, developments in the commodity markets impact not only prices you pay for goods every day, but the prices and value of your investments. Stay tuned for the Tom O'Brien Show with the boss. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.